April 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. There was a man from Rehathaim Zophim, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah. He was the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of the first was Hannah, and the name of the second was Peninnah. Now Peninnah had children, but Hannah was childless. Year after year this man would go up from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh. It was there that the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, served as the Lord's priest. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he used to give meat portions to his wife Peninnah and to all her sons and daughters. But he would give a double portion to Hannah because he especially loved her. Now the Lord had not enabled her to have children. Her rival wife used to upset her and make her worry, for the Lord had not enabled her to have children. Peninnah would behave this way year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the Lord's house, Peninnah would upset her so that she would weep and refuse to eat. Finally, her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep and not eat? Why are you so sad? Am I not better to you than ten sons? On one occasion in Shiloh, after they had finished eating and drinking, Hannah got up. Now at that time, Eli the priest was sitting in his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. She was very upset as she prayed to the Lord and she was weeping uncontrollably. She made a vow saying, O Lord of hosts, if you will look with compassion on the suffering of your female servant, remembering me and not forgetting your servant, and give a male child to your servant, then I will dedicate him to the Lord all the days of his life. His hair will never be cut. As she continued praying to the Lord, Eli was watching her mouth. Now Hannah was speaking from her heart. Although her lips were moving, her voice was inaudible. Eli therefore thought she was drunk. So he said to her, How often do you intend to get drunk? Put away your wine. But Hannah replied, That's not the way it is, my Lord. I am under a great deal of stress. I have drunk neither wine nor beer. Rather, I have poured out my soul to the Lord. Don't consider your servant a wicked woman, for until now I have spoken from my deep pain and anguish. Eli replied, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant the request that you have asked of him. She said, May I, your servant, find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and got something to eat. Her face no longer looked sad. They got up early the next morning, and after worshiping the Lord, they returned to their home at Ramah. Elkanah had marital relations with his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. After some time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, thinking, I asked the Lord for him. This man, Elkanah, went up with all his family to make the yearly sacrifice to the Lord and to keep his vow. But Hannah did not go up with him. Instead, she told her husband, Once the boy is weaned, I will bring him and appear before the Lord, and he will remain there from then on. So her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Do what you think best. Stay until you have weaned him. May the Lord fulfill his promise. So the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Once she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with three bowls, an ephah of flour, and a container of wine. She brought him to the Lord's house at Shiloh, even though he was young. Once the bull had been slaughtered, they brought the boy to Eli. She said, Just as surely as you are alive, my Lord, I am the woman who previously stood here with you in order to pray to the Lord. I prayed for this boy, and the Lord has given me the request that I ask of him. Now I dedicate him to the Lord. From this time on, he is dedicated to the Lord. Then they worship the Lord there. Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted high because of the Lord. I loudly denounce my enemies, for I am happy that you delivered me. No one is holy like the Lord. 
There is no one other than you. There is no rock like our God. Don't keep speaking so arrogantly, letting proud talk come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God who knows. He evaluates what people do. The bows of warriors are shattered for those who stumble find their strength reinforced. Those who are well fed hire themselves out to earn food, but the hungry no longer lack. Even the barren woman gives birth to seven, but the one with many children withers away. The Lord both kills and gives life. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord impoverishes and makes wealthy. He humbles and he exalts. He lifts the weak from the dust. He raises the poor from the ash heap to seat them with princes and to bestow on them an honored position. The foundations of the earth belong to the Lord, and he has placed the world on them. He watches over his holy ones. But the wicked are made speechless in the darkness, for it is not by one's own strength that one prevails. The Lord shatters his adversaries. He thunders against them from the heavens. The Lord executes judgment to the ends of the earth. He will strengthen his king and exalt the power of his anointed one. Then Elkanah went back home to Ramah, but the boy was serving the Lord under the supervision of Eli the priest. The sons of Eli were wicked men. They did not recognize the Lord's authority. Now the priest would always treat the people in the following way. Whenever anyone was making a sacrifice while the meat was boiling, the priest attendant would come with a three-pronged fork in his hand. He would jab it into the basin, kettle, cauldron, or pot, and everything that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they used to do to all the Israelites when they came there to Shiloh. Even before they burned the fat, the priest attendant would come and say to the person who was making the sacrifice, hand over some meat for the priest to roast. He won't take boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the individual said to him, first let the fat be burned away and then take for yourself whatever you wish, he would say, no, hand it over right now. If you don't, I will take it forcibly. The sin of these young men were very great in the Lord's sight, for they treated the Lord's offering with contempt. Now Samuel was ministering before the Lord. The boy was dressed in a linen ephod. His mother used to make him a small robe and bring it up to him at regular intervals when she would go up with her husband to make the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord raise up for you descendants from this woman to replace the one that she dedicated to the Lord. Then they would go to their home. So the Lord graciously attended to Hannah, and she was able to conceive and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. The boy Samuel grew up at the Lord's sanctuary. Now Eli was very old when he heard about everything that his sons used to do to all the people of Israel, and how they used to have sex with the women who were stationed at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He said to them, Why do you behave in this way? For I hear about the evil things from all these people. This ought not to be, my sons, for the report that I hear circulating among the Lord's people is not good. If a man sins against a man, one may appeal to God on his behalf. But if a man sins against the Lord, who then will intercede for him? But Eli's sons would not listen to their father, for the Lord had decided to kill them. Now the boy Samuel was growing up and finding favor both with the Lord and with people. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not plainly reveal myself to your ancestors' house when they were in Egypt in the house of Pharaoh? I chose your ancestor from all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer sacrifice on my altar, to burn incense, and to bear the ephod before me. I gave to your ancestors' house all the fire offerings made by the Israelites. Why are you scorning my sacrifice and my offering that I commanded for my dwelling place? You have honored your sons more than you have me by having made yourselves fat from the best parts of all the offerings of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I really did say that your house and your ancestors' house would serve me forever. 
But now the Lord says, may it never be, for I will honor those who honor me, but those who despise me will be cursed. In fact, days are coming when I will remove your strength and the strength of your father's house. There will not be an old man in your house. You will see trouble in my dwelling place. Israel will experience blessings, but there will not be an old man in your house for all time. Any one of you that I do not cut off from my altar, I will cause your eyes to fail and will cause you grief. All of those born to your family will die in the prime of life. This will be a confirming sign for you that will be fulfilled through your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. In a single day, they both will die. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest. He will do what is in my heart and soul. I will build for him a secure dynasty and he will serve my chosen one for all time. Everyone who remains in your house will come to bow before him for a little money and for a scrap of bread. Each will say, assign me a priestly task so I can eat a scrap of bread. God, today I come before you asking for blessings for everyone who's listening today that they will be intentional about going to the people in their life and thanking them for what they mean telling them that they love them and what a blessing they are god we seem to live in a in a very precarious time where at a moment's notice our lives can be literally blown apart by terrorists, natural disasters, cancer, and a multitude of of other medical issues. God, just let them know before it's too late to go to the people in their lives, their friends, their family members, perhaps even people that they need to work on the whole forgiveness part with. Just tell them that they love them. I think about about this in this story with Hannah and her husband Elkanah, where Hannah's heart is breaking at being childless, and, and childless is hard enough in our day and age. But back then, it was so devastating. We can pretty much uh, guess that Hannah was the first wife. And when she couldn't give Elkanah uh, an heir, which was so important to them back then. It's still important today, but back then it was so important. When she couldn't give him an an heir, that's probably where Penina came came in. Now, her husband probably could have chosen better, but um, Hannah, being the first wife, had all this responsibility into society and, and to her husband to produce a son for him incredible amount of pressure and then Pinina is brought in and she probably immediately got pregnant and and had a son for him and she torments Hannah with this fact and then when Hannah's husband Elkanah comes to her and says why are you crying why are you not eating why are you sad you you have me. I I'm fabulous. You don't need you don't need any kids. I will I will take care of you. I'm not going to throw you out of my house. I love you. You have me. And I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if Hannah just shook her head. Oh, he so doesn't get it. A- and he I have no doubt didn't get it based upon the statement that his second wife was just being horrid to Hannah. It was causing Hannah all sorts of sorts of strife. Um, and he figured he was good enough for Hannah without <laughs> having kids. But I think of this story a lot in having to do with how much we should cherish the incredible blessings that have been given to us in our lives. Even if people think differently than us. And at that time, Elkanah was thinking totally different than what Hannah was thinking. And she was probably pretty frustrated with him when he made that comment. Even when people agitate us and irritate us and say things 
that just baffle us or, or possibly in this case make us cry more. These are blessings that were given to us from God. Whether it be your husband, your wife, your kids, your friends, people who help you out in different situations. God, I just ask that you help people remember how important other people are in their life. And they take the time to tell them before it's too late. Luckily, it wasn't too late for Hannah and Elkanah, and, and you blessed her with Samuel. But I think of all these daily irritants of the people who are closest to us and how it drives us crazy and even leads to words of agitation or words of anger. <sighs> when we know at any given time with the people who we have lost in our lives, we would give anything, anything, to hear that snoring that drove us crazy one more time or that laugh that annoyed us one more time or that weird way of taking things just one more time. God, let us just be grateful for who we have in our lives right now and let us just be very clear with them and tell them so. Please help us not let these small irritants or possibly in the case hand of this big irritant distract us from these amazing people that you've brought into our life if their husband doesn't take out the garbage that night help them remember in their heart all the other incredible things that he has done if your child is being a typical teenager with grace fulfill their lives with boundaries and tell them how valuable they are to you. I know. God, I know most teenagers won't listen, but it will still be part of their heart. God, thank you. Thank you for everyone you have put in my life to help guide me and strengthen me and love me and teach me what love is. To help me grow in your word. To give me patience. To give me Strength when I feel like I can't go on and, and do this one more minute to continually point me back to you. They are just crazy awesome and I can't wait to tell them the first moment I get how much I appreciate them, how much I love them, how much they have truly changed my life so that I can tell them before it's too late. Thank you for these opportunities today, God. In your son's name I pray, amen.